<clears throat> Hello. Welcome to the explainer video of a casting call for my latest mod, which is currently going under the title of For Veil, but I might come up with a better name. In this video, I'm going to talk through uh, all the different characters that are available, and there's going to be some accompanying footage of the characters. If you don't want uh, any spoilers for the mod, don't watch this because it will be going through every character and pretty much the full story. There are a huge range of roles available for people of all ages and genders, some of which are big, some of which are small. Uh, if you have any friends or people you think might be interested, uh, please share this video and try and share it widely because there are quite a lot of voice actors uh, required for this mod. So. The mod takes place in the town of Fourville, a shanty town which has been built around the entrance to Vault 4. The town was founded 200 years ago by a group of survivors of a nuclear war who believed that they could wait for the vault to open and take refuge inside. When the vault never opened, the town gradually built up until it housed dozens of residents. When the player discovers the town, there's an election campaign going on and they can choose to support either the incumbent mayor, Wayne Sanders, or his, his challenger, Paula McKenzie. I've classified the characters uh, in terms of size of roles in the following ways. So Wayne Sanders and Paula McKenzie are considered main characters because they deliver the main quest line, although they're not necessarily the biggest roles. Any character classed as supporting has their own side quest for the player, while any classed as minor has a lot of lines but not necessarily an associated quest. And then those who are classed as extra appear in other people's quests but don't have one of their own. And some of these extra characters will also have the same voices of, as generic citizens, which is indicated in the role description. Most of the roles uh, are unpaid because uh, as a, a student I don't have really any disposable income and then these mods make nothing in donations, well, you know, one or two dollars uh, out of each mod. Um, but the characters who do have an exceptionally large number of lines or I felt needed a sort of greater emotional range do have a small payment attached. I've classified a line when I say how many lines a character has in the same way the creation kit does, which is a maximum of 150 characters, though some lines might be shorter than that. Uh, feel free to audition for uh, as many of the roles uh, as you like. So I'll begin just by going through each character uh, at a time. First character is Security Chief Pete Roscoe. Chief Roscoe is the gruff by the book Security Chief of Fourville. He's the first character the player will encounter when they arrive at the town, and he wants to vet them before allowing them access. Roscoe is hiding the secrets that he used to be in an army in the West, and that he was involved in a massacre there. He has come to the Commonwealth for a fresh start, believing he can atone. Roscoe has approximately 127 lines. Betty is a junk dealer in Fourville. She's nervous constantly on edge as though she has a dangerous secret which she feels is about to catch up with her. Betty's secret is that she is an escaped synth who is being pursued by her creators. She's taken refuge in Fourville. She will ask the player to collect holotapes left behind by the human Betty replaced, being a synthetic copy of the original Betty. Betty will later have her memory wiped and a new identity given to her, Joe, a confident gruff wasteland trader with no memory of the player. So. Voice actors for this role will have to provide voices for the current nervy synthetic Betty, the original human Betty who only appears in holotapes, and then uh, Joe as well once uh, her quest line is complete. Betty has approximately 108 lines. Big Ears is a homeless resident of Fourville. He gets his name from the fact he always has his ear to the ground looking for gossip and the fact that he has very large ears. He considers himself to be witty and charming salesman, but much of his tone is cheeky and bordering on rude. In exchange for a small fee, he'll provide the player with information about the other residents in the town. Big Ears has approximately 87 lines. The Father of the Four is the leader of a religious organisation which worships Vault Four as their god, referred to as The Four. The cult believes that Vault 4 is a divine entity which watches over them and will one day open a gate to let them all inside. The Father of the Four is a classic charismatic religious preacher. He presents himself as a wise spiritual leader but in reality he is deeply cynical. He does not believe in his own religion and manipulates his followers into looking after him. He sends the player into a trap wanting to make a martyr out of them in order to strengthen his leadership in the church. The Father has approximately 97 lines. 
The tent guard stands guard of a monument to the first tent ever erected in Fourville. He will tell the player about the town's history and sell them souvenirs. Uh, anyone auditioning for tent guard will also be auditioning for the role of male 01, who uh, will serve as one of several voices for the generic characters, which are Fourville residents, Fourville guards, members of the Church of the Four, vault residents, vault scientists, vault guards, and a gun buyer. The tent guard has approximately 25 lines, and there are then 116 generic resident lines. June Waters is the irritable secretary to Mayor Wayne Sanders. She hates her job, she hates the town, and she hates everyone who lives there. She's permanently bitter because she feels her sister cheated her out of her inheritance from her wealthy parents. June has approximately 75 lines. Wayne Sanders is the mayor of Fourville. Almost naively happy and optimistic, Wayne Sanders won the mayoralty of Fourville four years ago by promising to do everything he could to find a way to open the vault. He is a sincere believer that one day Vault 4 will open. Sanders is not especially concerned with policy and believes that so long as everyone is happy and friendly to one another, then Fourville will basically be fine. Sanders has approximately 215 lines. Healy Hutchinson is an eccentric inventor who believes he is descended from an ancient Irish peerage. He is a complete and total fool who is used to having been given everything he wants out of life and whose total unearned confidence and inability to listen to warnings eventually leads to his downfall. Oh, oh damn it, so I was reading a description of somebody totally different. Um, never mind, it's, it still fits with this character. Um, he should have a posh, pompous English accent. Healy Hutchinson has approximately 65 lines. Malcolm Longbottom runs the Fourville Museum. He is fascinated by anything pre-war. When the player meets him, he's trying to get an old holotape game to work. He's very enthusiastic about his work. He loves to study history, but more importantly, he loves to teach people about history. Malcolm has approximately 47 lines. Deputy Sanders is the daughter of Mayor Wayne Sanders. Like her father, she is kind-hearted to the point of naivety. She only got the Deputy Security Chief job because of her father. Security Chief Roscoe considers her to be so inept he has permanently assigned her to desk duty where she collects bounties. Sanders speaks with an affected southern accent because she thinks it makes her sound more like a sheriff. Sanders will offer the player bounties before eventually asking the player if she can come along on one of them because the target killed her mother. After killing the raider who killed her mother, Sanders will become more quiet and introspective. Sanders has approximately 54 lines. Lorraine is a kindly old woman who runs the town cafe. She never has a bad word to say about anyone. She loves home cooking and putting smiles on the faces of people in the town with her food. She most enjoys baking for Dr. Huxley, who she is in love with but has not told. However, Lorraine has a secret. She is addicted to gambling and has racked up a significant debt. Lorraine has approximately 78 lines. An unscrupulous arms salesman, the owner of Fourville's gun store, goes only by Mike. First and foremost, Mike is a businessman. He will initially hire a player to make deliveries of weapons to undisclosed clients. Mike has approximately 129 lines. Dr. Huxley, known to everyone as Hux, is a super mutant doctor living in Fourville. He is initially distant with a player, but later becomes involved in the quest line of Cafe Owner Lorraine. When Lorraine is kidnapped, Hooks will offer to help the player find her, and will later reveal that he is in love with her. He also has a brother who is a super mutant, and he has made it his life's work to cure him. Later in the mod, he will enlist the player's help. He should have a very deep voice. Huxley has approximately 231 lines. Rusty is the bartender at the Fourville Bar. He is shy, has no self-esteem and no friends because he is relentlessly bullied by the town loan shark, Nelson. Rusty has approximately 56 lines. Nelson is a loan shark who runs a gambling game from a Fourville bar. He is completely ruthless, cruel, greedy and has no redeeming qualities at all. He is always looking to manipulate people into parting with their money. He will pretend to be innocent and friendly to draw people in. Nelson has approximately 65 lines. Ms. McKenzie is challenging the incumbent mayor, Wayne Sanders, in the election. 
Ms. Mackenzie is essentially the opposite of Sanders. She believes that focusing on the vault has held the town back. She believes that the town should forget about the vault and focus instead on her detailed policy plans for the future of Fourville. Ms. Mackenzie is all business and has no time for idle chatter. Ms. Mackenzie has approximately 125 lines. Logan Verner is a player companion. A gruff mercenary with a gravelly voice. When the player meets him, he's a travelling mercenary hanging around the Fourville bar looking for his next job. He makes it very clear to the player that he has no interest in being friends, their relationship is all business. Logan is a gruff mercenary character who is initially not very talkative, however he does have a humorous side. He will occasionally comment on the player's actions and choices, as well as elements of a story or gameplay which are confusing or don't make sense. As Logan spends more time with the player, he begins to open up to them, initially questioning why the player hired him when they clearly look after themselves. As time goes on, he becomes friendlier and tells the player more of his backstory. He eventually reveals when he was younger, he faked his own death to get away from gambling debts, leaving his elderly mother to look after herself. When he learns his mother is on her deathbed, he asks the player to take him to see her. Logan has approximately 362 lines. Chuck Moon is one of Fourville's labourers. He spends his time digging in the walls in order to excavate more space to expand the town. He's the lowest of Fourville citizens and lives in a tiny, cramped metal shack. He is possibly the most unpleasant, coarse person in the entire town. He is always angry and can barely go a single sentence without inserting some kind of profanity. He's also incredibly selfish and greedy. It's best to assume that Chuck is always angry. Chuck has approximately 88 lines. Before the war, Marcus was a vault tech sales rep, now a ghoul. He makes it his business to stop people opening the vaults in order to protect them from the experiments vault tech performed inside. As a ghoul, Marcus should have a deep, coarse voice. Marcus has approximately 19 lines. Mr. Nally is a ghoul living in Fourville. On the day of the nuclear war, he had a place in Vault 4 and travelled there with his son and infant grandson. When he discovered his family would be unable to join him, he agreed to give up his place in the vault so his son and grandson could be safe. He decided to wait for them for the 20-year period the vault was scheduled to be closed. During the time he waited, he became afflicted with radiation poisoning, turning him into a ghoul, extending and extending his lifespan. 200 years later, after the bombs, the vault still has not opened, and Mr. Nally continues to wait. He fills his time by telling stories to the local children, inspired by his own life. As a ghoul, he has a gravelly voice, but he's now old and weak. Mr. Nally has approximately 145 lines. May Waters is the sister of June Waters, secretary to a Fourville mayor. May Waters is incredibly wealthy, snobby, and spoiled after tricking her sister into giving up her share of her inheritance from her parents. She now lives in the upper stands of Diamond City with the other rich people. May has approximately 19 lines. Paul is the brother of Fourville doctor Peter Huxley, known as Hux. Both Hux and Paul were turned into super mutants after their vault was raided. While Hux retained his human memories, Paul did not and still believes he is fighting in the Master's army. Hux is searching for a cure for Paul's condition to try and turn him human again. After several tries, Hux is successful. As a super mutant, Paul should have a very deep voice. As a human, he should sound normal. Paul has approximately 50 lines. Norman Norm Marshall is the security chief for Vault 4. At first glance, he appears tough and imposing. In reality, he has very little interest in performing his job and seeks to delegate responsibility wherever he can. Norm has approximately 57 lines. Chuck Nally is the affable overseer of Vault 4. It is his job to look after the entire vault. He is incredibly accommodating and will bend over backwards in order to make any resident or visitor happy. He is first introduced when Vault 4 opens and he greets the mayor of the town outside the vault. Chuck has approximately 82 lines. Vault 4 is run by an artificial intelligence which is interfaced with by a Mr. Handy robot. As well as handling the vital functions of a vault, this interface robot acts as a butler for the residents. Although it is an AI, it should have a human sounding voice rather than a synthesised one. The AI has approximately 94 lines. Workshop Willie is the vault's handyman. He spends most of his time in his workshop tinkering with bits of junk. He is content with his life and always upbeat and cheerful. He will task the player with, with repairing the old overseer's terminal. 
He is involved in the storyline of eccentric Fourville resident Nigel Healy Hutchinson, who tasks him with locating the parts to fix his plane. Willy has approximately 62 lines. Constantine Campbell is a resident of Vault 4. All the other residents think he's crazy because he repeatedly makes claims that nothing in Vault 4 is real, himself included. He is intense and insistent that the player believe him. Campbell has approximately 39 lines. Sir David Tilly VIII is the last of a long line of wealthy individuals who have occupied the luxury suite of Vault 4. David is obsessed with Shakespeare and regularly and without context quotes from his plays. He sends the player out to find a copy of his sonnet so that he may be preserved for all of time. David has approximately 45 lines. Susie Malone is a resident of Vault 4. Unlike the other residents, Susie does not want to integrate into the town which has been built up outside the vault. Depending on which branch of a main story the player chooses, Susie can be recruited to help the player close the vault. However, she is arrested by security and held in a cell before she can complete her task. Susie is initially outspoken and irritable. After her time in the cell, she becomes docile and passive. Susie has approximately 41 lines. Vincent Long is a resident of Vault 4. He has an almost childlike fascination of the world outside the vault and the treasures it holds. He sends the player on a series of quests where they must find treasure in a random location. Vincent has approximately 65 lines. Bobby Wicked is Vault 4's hairdresser, but he thinks of himself as better than that. He thinks of himself as a bit of a cool dude, a gangster, a wise guy. He always behaves as though he is hiding something. He will recruit the player to find a friend of his, a mercenary who has been hired to recover a computer code from a ghoul infested factory. In reality, Bobby has no interest in Duke, his friend, and wants the source code for himself. Wicked has approximately 46 lines. Jack and John Shilcock are identical twin brothers. Together, the brothers are the teachers of a vault school. They are always found together and take part in each other's dialogue. They are quick talkers and often finish each other's sentences. They will ask the player to recover educational materials for the school and will occasionally teach classes. Jack has approximately 59 lines, while John has approximately 55. Ms. Hassabula is a resident of Vault 4 who is madly and inexplicably in love with Fourville's bartender, Rusty. Regardless of a player's sex, when they first speak to Hassabula, she will attempt to flirt with them before revealing her love for Rusty. Hassabula has approximately 44 lines. Sam Page is Vault 4's chef. He is most famous for his Tato omelette. In exchange for buying the recipe, he asks the player to get his lucky wooden spoon back from fellow resident Ms. Hassenbuehler, who he is afraid of. Page has approximately 39 lines. Quinn is a mysterious resident of Vault 4 who lives alone in a locked, dirty room. None of the other residents acknowledge his existence. The player first discovers Quinn when another Vault resident, Constantine Campbell, tells the player the entire vault is a simulation and Quinn's room contains the control room. When the player gains access to the room, Quinn will tell them the story of Mr. Abominable, a monster which lives in the western foothills. Quinn has approximately 38 lines. Sue Janeway is a trader and resident of Vault 4. She is especially curious about the outside world since her family is in possession of a tape which was intended to be delivered to a family who did not make it to a vault. She asks the player if they will be willing to find the rest of the tapes for her. Janeway has approximately 33 lines. Campbell R-494-2077 is an advanced military android constructed at military base Sentinel Site Campbell and was housed in Vault 4 during the nuclear war. The Vault's doctor, Dr. Stennett, manages to activate the android with the help of a player. It will have a monotonous, synthesised voice. The android has approximately 28 lines. Abraham Abominable, known by his nickname Mr. Abominable, is a drug cooker who lives alone in a cave. In order to stop people finding him, he has created a myth of a monster which lives in the cave and set up traps to make it appear real. He has an intense rivalry with a loan shark in Fourville, known as Nelson, and will ask the player to kill him once they earn his trust. Mr. Abominable has approximately 47 lines. There are three different generic child roles available in the mod, and there's Child 01 and Child 02, which are male children, and Child 03, which is a female child. And there are children both in the vault and in Fourville. The children in the vault listen to stories told by Mr. Nally and will comment on them, and the child in the vault attends the school. Child 01 has approximately 27 lines, 
Chaldo 2 has approximately 28 lines, while Chaldo 3 has approximately 24 lines. Dave is one of Fourville's labourers. The labourers are the lowest in Fourville society, spending all their time excavating a cave so the town can expand. As such, they are bitter, unsociable and usually aggressive and selfish. Dave only has one line, and this role will also be the role of the generic male voice 08. The Diamond City security officer walks in on the player robbing the strong room. If a player is in a disguise, then the security officer will speak to them. If not, he attacks straight away. There are approximately 10 Diamond City security guard lines, and if you audition for this role, you'll also be auditioning for the voice of generic males, 04. Digits is one of a group of mercenaries hired to break into a factory and steal a computer code. Digits is a group's technological expert and mostly accesses computers. If you're auditioning for this, then you'll also be auditioning for one of the eight generic female roles. Digits has seven lines and there are approximately 116 generic resident lines. Dorothy Werner is the mother of potential companion Logan Werner. She believes that Logan was killed in a fire in their home when he was 18. Now, when she is on her deathbed, he finally returns to share her final moments with her. She is very weak by the time Logan finally gets to her. Her voice should be weak and croaky. Dorothy has eight lines. Duke is a mercenary hired by an unknown client to track down the Watts source code for Vault 4's AI. When the player meets him, he is trapped by feral ghouls inside a factory. Duke has approximately 52 lines. If you're auditioning for this, you'll also be auditioning for the generic male voices. Followers of the Four are part of a cult which worships Vault 4. This particular follower has taken a bribe from an unknown ghoul to spread lies about the incumbent mayor Wayne Sanders to sabotage his election campaign. If you're auditioning for this role, you'll also be auditioning for Generic Males 03. This Fourville security guard appears during the side quest of cafe owner Lorraine. Lorraine has gone missing and the player was the last person to see her before they disappeared. The guard interrogates the player and if their answers are not sufficient, they'll stop the player leaving the town. The guard has approximately 29 lines, and if you're auditioning for this, you'll also be auditioning for the generic male voice 07. Mr. McDonnell is an aging gangster to whom player companion Logan Werner owes a significant amount of money. Logan has gone into hiding, but Mr. McDonnell uses the fact that Logan's mother is dying to draw him out. He confronts Logan at his mother's bedside. Mr. McDonnell has approximately 14 lines. Judith is a scavenger whose friend has been infected with a forced evolutionary virus. She is working on a cure but has little technical expertise. She doesn't have much patience when the player bothers them. Judith shares her voice with one of the eight generic characters, and this role will comprise Fourville residents, Fourville guards, members of the Church of the Four, Vault residents, Vault scientists, Vault guards and a gun buyer. Judith has 20 lines for approximately 116 generic resident lines. Laura Stennett is the daughter of a vault's doctor, Christine Stennett. Her mother wants her to become a scientist when she grows up, but Laura wants to work with a vault's handyman, Workshop Willie. She is naturally inquisitive and tends to question what her teachers tell her in school. Laura has approximately 20 lines. Mary is a scavenger whose friend has become infected with a forced evolutionary virus. She's very concerned for his safety. Auditioning for this role will also be auditioning for the female generic characters. There are 116 generic resident lines, and Mary has six lines. The returning officer announces the results of a Fourville mayoral election. If you audition for this role, you'll also be auditioning for one uh, of the generic resident voices. There are 116 generic resident lines, and the returning officer has three lines. Steve is one of Fourville's labourers. The labourers are the lowest in Fourville society, spending all their time excavating the caves so the town can expand. As such, they are bitter, unsociable and unusually aggressive and selfish. This role will also be for one of the generic male characters. The Steve has approximately 16 lines and there are approximately 116 generic resident lines. Ben Armstrong is a character who only appears in holotapes. He is one member of the Armstrong family. On the day of the Great War, they were supposed to travel to a National Guard bunker together. Each family member was given a fraction of an access code, but Ben decided not to come. Ben has four lines. 
Mr. Armstrong is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. He was the father of the Armstrong family. On the day of the Great War, they were supposed to travel to the National Guard bunker together, each family member given a fraction of the access code. He was a cruel bully who drove his family apart. Mr. Armstrong has 16 lines. Kate is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. She is one member of the Armstrong family. She was sent the codes to access a nuclear bunker by her brother, but decided not to come. Kate has two lines. Mike Armstrong is a character who only appears in, in holotape recordings. He's a member of the Armstrong family. At age 18, he fled his tyrannical father to join the army. With nuclear war looming, he stole the access codes to a nuclear bunker and sent them to his family to try to save them. Mike has six lines. Mrs. Armstrong is a character who only appears in holotapes. She was the mother of the Armstrong family. The long-suffering wife of Mr. Armstrong, she eventually tells him how she feels and is killed in a confrontation. Mrs. Armstrong has nine lines. Frank Howard is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. He was an employee at Real Patriot Game Studios. He uncovered the existence of a Chinese spy working at the company and has taken the information to company CEO, Mr. Wu. Frank Howard has five lines. Rory is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. He was a problem student at South Boston High School. He had an antagonistic relationship with his teacher, Mr. Turner. On the day of a nuclear war, he was attending detention with Mr. Turner when a nuclear blast caused the building to collapse, trapping them. During their time trapped in the school basement, Mr. Turner looked after Rory and continued to give him an education. They gradually grew closer and became friends. Rory stayed with Mr. Turner as he died of radiation poisoning before leaving the school for an unknown fate. Rory has 30 lines. Mr. Turner is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. He was a teacher at South Boston High School. Although he had a bad temper, he genuinely cared about his students and wanted to help them as best he could. On the day of the nuclear war, he was holding detention for a problem student, Rory. A nuclear bomb caused the classroom to collapse, trapping them in the basement. Mr. Turner tried to protect Rory from the realities of a new world by holding up in the school and going on supply runs while keeping Rory busy with school books. Although they start off hating each other, after a long time in the school basement they become friends. Mr. Turner slowly succumbs to radiation poisoning, but only after preparing Rory for a life on his own. Mr. Turner has 38 lines. Mr. Wu is a character who only appears in holotape recordings. He was the founder and CEO of Real Patriot Games. The company was actually a front for Mr. Wu's role as a Chinese spy. One of the company's employees, Frank Howard, comes to Mr. Wu telling him he has evidence of a Chinese spy working in the company. However, he does not suspect Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu has four lines. Females 1, 2, 4 and 6 are auditions for only one of the eight generic female roles. These roles will comprise several generic characters. Fourville residents, Fourville guards, members of a church of the four, vault residents, vault scientists, vault guards and a gun buyer. There are approximately 116 generic resident lines. And so that's it. That's all the roles available for Fourville. Uh, please feel free, as I said, to audition for all, as many as you like, and please do share this video as widely as possible because there are quite a lot of roles that need filling. If you did watch this far, congratulations for listening to me chudder on for all that time, and thank you for watching, and goodbye.